excited to get this call started, but I want to do, start doing something new. Okay. So this is exciting for me because I would love to hear more. I'm just going to ask two questions. So my first question is, I want to hear about an experience that you or one of your coaches has had so far with to be mindset. So if one of you wants to unmute yourself or multiple, if you, if we have multiple um, experiences so far, do we have any wins on that? Yes. Heather and then Shannon. Um, yeah, I totally do. So I have a coach who's actually, she needs to lose a hundred pounds and she's been really struggling with working out. And so she actually has been like, she dove in last week as soon as she got it on Wednesday and she's already dropped five pounds, like just by like, you know, and she's like, I'm eating so much. I mean, it was just like, I don't know. It makes me tear up. I'm so like, just so exciting, you know, to see somebody that she, you know, she's really just needed this. So it's been awesome. Oh, I love that so much. Thank you so much for sharing. What about you, Shannon? You raised your hand as well. Yeah. Well, Heather, that's awesome. That's so exciting. Um, yeah, we have a couple, um, on our team that they've been, um, kind of on and off with their weight loss and nutrition. And, um, the, the lady, she had gastric bypass surgery and she's just really struggled to keep it off and be, be consistent. And so, um, anyway, they just started a couple of days ago, but, um, but they're both like jumping in with, in with two feet because the containers were just a little overwhelming for them because they had to eat so many containers. And so um, they're just, they're super excited because it's been a lot simpler. Um, I think they said they lost like, I don't know, one or two pounds in the first couple of days. <laughs> she wants to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but I just, I was so excited for them because they, they've been coaches, I don't know, like three years and they've been to summit a couple times and they're just like always like on and off, on and off, but they're just super excited that this is simple and they can do it together. So. Oh, I love that so much. So cool. Hey, yeah. um, my next question is what has been a success so far within your challenge group, either this week or last week? So two more Two more answers, and then we'll jump into our topic at hand. Anybody? Oh, Steph, I need to unmute you again. <laughs> okay, go. No, I think that I'm doing a separate group with the 2B Mindset, and I just think ever since that program has launched, it's gotten people more excited. I don't know. I feel like the our, the all my challenge groups as a whole have just kind of exploded with excitement and mm -hmm. engagement. Um, so I think that this whole new mindset thing is helping everybody because even if they're, I have a lot that are in both my regular community and just the to be mindset. So I think it's just getting a lot of people talking and excited. Awesome. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Do we have one more win within your challenge group so far in this past week? Something new I'm doing. I'm just asking two questions when we first start because I want to hear these successes. It's so fun. Anybody else? Yeah, Shannon, go. Um, just a win of someone that's been working out late at night and they swapped to working out in the morning. And yeah, I was really excited about that just to, you know, have a change in their day so they have more time and um, more energy and they're excited about the day. And so, yeah. Awesome. That's like one of the biggest wins. When I lived in Florida, my best friend owns a gym out there and she's always like, work out with me at 5 a.m. And I was like, not a chance of Will I ever do that? And for the past three years, that's all I do is work out at like 5, 5, 30, 6 a.m. So it's like things have changed, um, but it is, that's a big change within a routine. So I love that. Yay. Okay. Thank you for going on this little um, squirrel moment, but you just know every single time we first start, I'm going to ask you those questions. Like what is a, an experience that you've had so far with a product that's working really well? Of course I said to be mindset because that is so fresh and so new. And then just what's happening within your challenge groups. I would love to hear, you know, what's going on. So just kind of keep those at the forefront now that I've asked them. Um, but without further ado, let's, I'm just going to turn this over to um, Jade here. So basically let me introduce her. As you know, she is a three-star diamond. I did um, introduce you a little bit, Jade but she is a three-star diamond. She is in my other group. Um, and what was so cool is when I was doing a one-on-one -on -one with her, I started asking her questions and it was exactly what we said that was needed 
on this call. And so with Jade, I did give you her accolades, of course, number 93 within the company, getting new ranks here very, very soon. But what's super cool, I mean, she already has 60 points for the year, which is way above on track as far as elite goes. She already has her two new diamonds. Um, and then also, you know, the majority of her business is through Instagram. So I'm super excited for her just to kind of, you know, and, and keep in mind, ladies, I say that because we're all ladies, is if you have a question, do not hesitate to ask. Of course, as you know, she's not going to bite. Um, but please, like, get your, your questions answered as far as Instagram goes. So, Jade, without further ado, will you tell us a little bit about yourself and then just pop into the topic of Instagram? Yes, absolutely. So, I do have, like, some notes pulled up. So, if I miss questions, I'll try and look over them at the end. But... I have been a coach for three years. When I started coaching, I was actually in school full-time. I was in my senior year of college. Um, I was a full-time student teacher. I was commuting two hours a day, and I was trying to coach as well. So when I have new coaches start, and they're like, oh, I just don't have time, I'm like, oh my gosh, let, let me tell you about not having time, because I was literally gone from the house every day from about 6 a.m., sometimes a little earlier, till about 10 p.m., and I still made it work. So I'm like super passionate about Instagram. It's absolutely where I built my business. I enjoy Facebook, but not as much. But some of the things like before, like really diving into how I utilize Instagram to move my business forward, um, some things that I always share with my newer coaches too, because I think it's a scary thing when you're not a presence on social media when you get started, because that was me. I literally opened an Instagram to start this. Um, I didn't use Facebook because I hated all the drama and everything. So I just wasn't present on social media. And so what I always tell my coaches is you don't need a huge following to see success. There are different ways to see success, especially using Instagram. Um, like I said, that's my playground. Um, but I started with zero. So I've had to figure out things that worked for me. Obviously, you guys are leaders. You know that you have to like try things and figure out what works and doesn't work. Um, but consistency is always always, always, always going to be key with social media, whether it be Facebook or Instagram, um, and just tweaking little things and always making sure that this is your storefront. I like really hold myself to a high standard with that because that's the first thing people are going to do when they hear, get a message from you when they get anything from you, they're just going to go look at your page. And if it doesn't look professional, they're not going to talk to us like we are a professional. And I learned that very quickly on like my upline and her upline have very beautiful social media. And I was just so overwhelmed in the beginning. I was like, how, like no one is going to take me seriously if it doesn't look like a legit business. And if it doesn't look like I, I am proud of myself. So I started doing tons of research. Like I said, I had a two hour drive every single day. So I would YouTube like crazy in the car. I would always just type in YouTube, like growing your social media, growing your brand, um, reaching out to more people. And I would just listen to that as my personal development because I didn't have the money at the time to invest in Audible or anything like that. So I was doing tons and tons of research and it quickly became something I was kind of addicted to and just loved learning. Um, actually one year into coaching is when I went full time. So right when I graduated college, um, I was offered two teaching positions on the spot. So I got my degree in secondary art and English education. I was offered two spot, two positions on the spot and I was actually able to turn them down because at that point I was meeting my teaching income and most of that is coming straight through Instagram. So a couple of things that I really dialed my focus in on in the beginning was lighting. Um, does it go well together? So when I look at a page, like when my coaches ask me to critique their pages, does it flow? Does it look like professional? Um, whether that be a theme, like a color theme or something like that, or using like a visco filter maybe on all of your photos, just making it look very branded. Um, and then going with that, Picking your five, and I'm sure most of you guys have heard of like your five, just the five things that people will see consistently on your page. I make sure that I'm very, very true to those. And yeah, they're gonna adapt over time, but making sure that when they do change, that you're super consistent with those five. So for me, for example, if you guys were to look at my page, you're gonna see a lot of me and my now fiance, we just got engaged. So it's like all the sweating for the wedding and that kind of stuff. You're also gonna see a ton about my pets. You're going to see a lot of travel. You're going to see a lot of health and fitness. And it's okay to have health and fitness be a huge part of it. But one thing I never do 
is I never brand Beachbody. And yes, I'm extremely passionate about our products and our programs, but I don't talk about them using their names. So I'm very, very smart with how I do that. So I kind of have, let's see, I have five tips on how I really share on social media to go from like nothing to an actual invite. Um, number one is to have a social media game plan. So every single week, I know if I'm gonna be talking about coaching or if I'm gonna be talking about my fitness challenge. So I always have a focus for the week. It can be different for you. Um, everyone's can be different, but when I start a new month, I always look at the month and kind of dis decide how my social media is gonna be based on what I want to do. So this week, for example, the focus is a lot more fitness related, and then this weekend I will do a like boot camp call to action. Next week it'll be all about coaching and I'll do a coaching call to action. So I really try to breadcrumb throughout the entire week so that when they see that call to action publicly, publicly on my page, um, they just are already interested. We have something really, really cool now with like stories and utilizing the links in our bios. Like there's so many little pieces that you can attach your clients to. So um, like I said, I do buy bi-weekly things. So fitness focus, coach focus, fitness focus, coach focus. And I just like that flow. Could be totally different for you. I enjoy doing coach um, sneak peeks bi-weekly. Maybe you want to do it once a month. Um, so always just having a game plan and honestly write it out in your calendar so that you don't, there's no question about it. You can look and be like, okay, this week it really needs to be focused on this. The second thing is utilize that link in your bio. I see so many coaches with no link. That's a free resource for us to utilize. So I personally use Linktree. I think it's amazing. It looks professional. It looks clean. I like things to look very like white and polished. So my Linktree is just very basic. It's like white and black and people can easily see. Now, if you guys are using Linktrees, I am always looking at what other coaches are doing in their Linktrees to kind of see what catches my eye. Um, I see a lot of coaches where they're say like application to show interest and it's like a really long thing in my coaching world or whatever. If you keep it super simple, I find that that works way better. So mine literally says like become a coach like me because they already see kind of what I'm doing and they're like, oh, I want to do what she's doing. So it makes sense. Become a coach like me. Right under that it says join my fitness challenge. So they're very different. A lot of times if people just say like join my world or um, join my boot camp or join my challenge group. People don't understand the terminology. So I try to keep it very simple there. Um, having those two things in there are going to be really, really helpful because any new person that comes to your page, at least me, I know when I go to someone's page, whether they be a coach or not, if I see a link, I'm curious what that link is. So I'll click on it. So as soon as they click that link, they immediately know, okay, I can either apply to be a part of her team or I can get help on my um, fitness. And what's cool is that if I ever like run an ad through Instagram or anything like that, um, or even a call to action, like publicly on my page, and I'm looking for only coaches, a lot of people tend to apply for the fitness challenge as well, because they see it, they're curious and they're like, oh, she has two things to offer. So that right there is a huge funnel for me where it's always bringing people in. Now those links for me, I do have them linked to a landing page on Squarespace. Um, it's just a website that I've created Now that's not needed. And I always tell my coaches that because I did have to pay for that website. Um, you can use like Google forms or whatever and just create little applications. And like I said, you guys are more than welcome to go look at mine and see kind of the questions that I have and stuff like that. I do keep it very, very simple so that they don't get bored and <laughs> people have very short attention spans. So it's very to the point they can apply, it pops it into my email, and then I have snippets from there that I can just quickly send them. So it's a very seamless process. Um, yes, <laughs> the link tree, there it is. Um, the third thing is to heavily utilize Instagram stories. This is like everything for me right now. So I used to, as a new coach, I was posting like, I was told to post like three to six times a day on Instagram with how the algorithms are always changing. Like, obviously I don't know exactly what the algorithms are, but I tend to see if I post one really solid photo a day with a really good caption, it does a lot better than if I post two or three a day because I've heard, and like I said, I don't know if it's true, but I've heard that your photos can compete against each other and then none of them do very well. 
So I post once a day, um, sometimes twice a day, and I just make sure it's very, very solid. Other than that, everything is on Instagram stories. Yes, it's behind the scenes, but it's still very polished. I make sure that it looks cohesive with my page. Um, I make sure that I have like an agenda with it throughout the day. So some things that I do every single day on my Instagram stories, I share a little bit of my morning routine, whether it be me having coffee or me making breakfast or whatever. I share a little bit of my morning routine. Normally I put a timestamp on it so that people can see that I'm up early and actively doing something with my day. And I'm not just someone that works from home and is super lazy because I think that since I've started doing that, I've attracted a lot more coaches that are fo like focused and actually want to see success rather than they're like, oh, I can work from home and do whatever I want. So I make sure that I start that early in the morning, um, even when I was like busier and not home all the time. That's something that you can easily snap throughout the day. So always focusing on that. So my morning routine, I always share my energize because I'm obsessed with it. And almost every single time I share it, I just very small, right? Like swipe up to grab your own. Now, if you don't have the swipe up feature yet, that happens at 10,000 followers. You can just say swipe up to message me about it. Um, and that's what I have my coaches do. So it's a really cool little boost in volume. And I found that that helped a ton within my downline. And as leaders, like having your downline have higher volume is just going to help us with that team cycle bonus as well. So this is something I teach my coaches to do as well. Swiping up on our Energize. Um, it's also going to show that you're utilizing the products and that's something that I want my coaches doing too. So I always share my Energize. I don't actually share the container. Like if the container, like for today, for example, the container is visible. I turned it around so that they can't see Energize. That way people ask me and they message me about it. I can't tell you how many messages I get a day. Like what's that yellow stuff you drink? Because it doesn't say Energize. I don't call it Energize. I call it either pre-workout or liquid life. And as soon as they message me, I just send them a link and I have tons of people just order Energize. Um, I always show a couple workout clips. Now I think the key with anything in my Instagram stories is these small little invites. So I'm always starting conversations. So I show like one to three workout clips. I don't want to show too many because then they basically get the programs for free. I always tell them, um, swipe up if you need a coach. DM me if you need a coach. Just very small. It's not like plastered across it huge because I don't want it to seem super salesy. But always these little things because the more that they see it day after day after day, they're going to be like, okay, let me just ask this girl what this is all about. And that starts a conversation for me. Um, I always share a meal plan approved lunch or snack throughout the afternoon. And it's like something super simple. I'm not someone that enjoys cooking and spending hours in the kitchen. So it's always super simple. And I share like this is a quick on the go meal plan approved recipe. And I, I just share that healthy doesn't have to suck. So just sharing little pieces of that throughout the day. Um, and then after that, it's basically just life. Like in the afternoon, into the evening, sometimes like my fiance will pop on and he's funny and people think he's hilarious. And so every once in a while I'll have him on there. Um, sometimes my pets will be on there. Sometimes they'll just be like cooking dinner. Like I keep it very easy going into the evenings. And then things that I also share, but not on a regular basis are, I share about coaching. So yesterday, it might still be up there. Um, yesterday afternoon, I shared how we were running a, basically a sneak peek. We called it a fitness influencer workshop. And so I shared about it. I talked very, very quickly about how sucky my Mondays used to be, um, how I hated going to work and how I was able to change that for myself. And then I just said, like, if you're interested, like if you've been watching, if you are interested in what I'm doing, I'm running a free group. It's a, a, for fitness influencers. And I just said, swipe up. So I know everyone doesn't have the swipe up feature, but it's the same thing. If they swipe up and it takes them to a group or if they swipe up and message you, you're still having those connections. Um, so I, I share about coaching and I share about like the sneak peek. Um, sometimes I will share a behind the scenes work day where I'll just share like a glimpse into my boot camp um, that I'm posting on social media and I'll just share with them those vital behaviors that I'm doing every day so that they can see exactly what it is I'm doing. Utilizing the highlight section of Instagram is also really cool. So one of my highlights is strictly a day in the life. So when people are coming to my page, they can click that and see exactly what I do in a day. And at the very end of it, it prompts them to join the team. So I just have all these little funnels 
created on my Instagram where they like, it's almost like everyone has to see an invite at some point, which is really cool. Um, let's see. Sometimes I'll show them into my boot camp or challenge group or fitness challenge or whatever you want to call it. I'll actually like screen flow, like just record into my boot camp and show them like some of the girls that are crushing it. I share transformations when girls let me. Um, I share like non-scale victories. I'm always sharing those things because I think a lot of times, especially newer coaches, they don't have that public proof yet. They don't have like a, a large following and they don't have tons and tons of clients to show. So showing like small wins like that has been so transformational for my, my coaches as well. So that starts with us. What we're sharing, they're going to share. And if we're not publicly doing these things, our coaches aren't going to know to do it either. So I make sure that I'm always doing exactly what I want them to do. Sometimes I'll show Beachbody On Demand. Um, a lot of times people are like, you just make up your own workout. So the more that we can show them that without it saying like Beachbody On Demand, because then they'll just Google it, is really helpful. I share Fixate because that's where most of my clients or potential clients struggle. And now the 2B mindset is just amazing. Um, but with nutrition, so always sharing the recipes and the things that we have access to. And I just show that right on my Instagram stories. And then um, that's basically it. But within all of my Instagram stories, you guys, I'm never using any Beachbody lingo. I'm very, very huge on branding yourself. The biggest, I guess, compliment that many of my coaches or clients say when they're enrolling is, oh my gosh, I didn't know that you were a part of Beachbody. And I think that's so cool because they've heard about it in the past, but they're signing up with me because they trust me. They don't care what we have to offer, but they're going to sign up with us because they trust us. They see what we're doing. They know that it works. So how I was kind of able to brand myself very, very strongly on Instagram is I created names for my things. So my challenge group is called the Transformation Center. It's been called that for a year and a half. So now when I talk about the Transformation Center, my followers immediately know like, oh my gosh, her boot camp is open again for registration. I'm so excited. And I have people almost coming to me rather than me just searching for everyone, which is really, really cool. And I always heard like eventually, like it's like pushing that snowball up the mountain, you know, eventually it'll begin to snowball. And now I, I, I never have to like beg people to join my boot camp. People come to me every month because I've branded it so very hard. I actually have um, like a little handbook that I printed out for my boot camp, and I've shared this on social media too. And it's just a very simple start guide, you guys. It has like the steps for what they should do to see success, and it's like determine your why, track your measurements, and I just pulled things straight off of Beachbody on demand and put them in here. But this is something that I can show them. So that's how like branded I've made things. So super brand your boot camp. Um, I also branded my team very, very strongly and I talk about it all the time. So we're called the Tone Boss Tribe. And I talk about success on the Tone Boss Tribe and I talk about Tone Boss Tribe retreats. And I always say that rather than my beach body team. And so people will start coming to me saying like, I wanna join the Tone Boss Tribe, like what is it? And they know what it's called, which is really cool. And the more you're going to brand, the more you brand anything, people want to be a part of it. I remember before coaching, I would see like Kayla It Scenes or any of these other fitness girls. And I was like, that's so cool. Like I would love to create a handbook or I'd love to create that or I'd love to be a part of that. So that's kind of how I decided to really dive into branding because as soon as you do that, it takes time. It absolutely takes time to brand yourself and create something that you're super proud of. But the more excited you are about it, the easier it's gonna to be to talk about it and people are just gonna be so attracted to it. Like I said, they're not gonna care what it is that we have to offer. The fifth thing is once they show interest, so whether they are swiping up on my Instagram stories, direct messaging me, commenting below on a photo, I always collect emails. So even if they message me on Instagram, I just tell them like, hey, let me grab your email. It's way easier for me to chat over there. And I pull everyone into Gmail where I use Streak. Um, there's tons of great trainings on Streak. I don't know if you guys all use it, but I love it. And for every single funnel I have, whether it be coaching or joining my boot camp or 2 be mindset or whatever, I create a video. It's just a super simple video of me sitting like right here talking to them about what it is. 
So I'm not sending them a huge long email with all the information. I send them like a five minute, I try to keep it under five minutes, video. Every single video has the very, very similar flow. It's me sharing my story. It's me explaining what is involved, whether it be coaching or a boot camp, And then it's me explaining what is in it for them, like what they get. And then I explain the price. And then at the very end, I just say, email me back if you're ready to claim your spot. It's so simple and I don't have to type out tons of things. Um, I know that personally for me, I'm way more likely to watch a video than I am to read through a bunch of text. So I just try to think like, what am I doing and what would I want to see? And then I do that for my clients because we want to attract people very similar to us. So doing those videos, I, I think that's been the biggest game changer. Um, I honestly only run sneak peeks now, even for my team once a month. And then personally, all my clients or potential coaches are going to a landing page with my video. So I don't even run a sneak peek. It's just there. I can update it. And it's a very, very seamless process. So that's kind of all I have for transitioning people. Did you guys have any questions? I have a question for you. Yes. Um, and I'm going to ask you some questions at the end. But my question for you is, is because you do have a ton of followers, you have a ton of engagement. So my question for you is, is how long do you initially take in order to invite? I mean, clearly they're coming to you because of the content you're putting out there. But how many conversations are you having before you're inviting them? So I honestly, like once, once they reach out to me about anything or once I reach out to them, it's pretty quick. And at first, like when I was a newer coach, I was kind of dragging it on and doing the form and like getting to know them a lot. But I found that I was losing a lot of people in that. And a lot of times people just want like to get to the point, at least the people I'm talking to. So I kind of just move right into it. Um, sometimes I have normal conversations with people and just build friendships. But when people show interest right from the get go, I just kind of dive in and it's like a three email process. And it's just me sending that, like once I get them into my email, it's just me sending them the video. Normally they'll respond and say they're in. I ask them what flavor shakeology they want or if they want the performance line, I put the order in and tell them registration's in. So it's a very, very quick process, but it's been working really well. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, who yeah. wants to go? Yes. Go ahead and unmute yourself. I have a question. Um, thanks, Jade. That was awesome. Um, so once someone's ready to go, what's your um, onboarding process for new coaches? So once they're officially enrolled, mm -hmm. I actually have um, seven videos that are in a Facebook group and I just add them into that Facebook group. Now it's a new coach training Facebook group. And the reason I did that is because I wanted them to just be able to go at their own pace and I wanted to keep everything on Facebook. I used to do Thinkific. I used to make my own website. Um, but I just found that people were getting lost in the shuffle. So I just add them into our team page. And then in our team page, they did just change it on Facebook, but it was highlighted at the top where they could link right to their new coach training. So I just send them those two links and their welcome email. Hop in the team page. Here's your new coach training. Through that training, um, it's self-paced. They're just put in there. And Facebook now, I'm working on transitioning it. Facebook now has, if you go into like the setting, edit, edit or whatever of a group, you can create a learning, you can make it a learning thing and you can create units, which oh. is really, really cool. So that's what I'm working on transitioning to, it to. But yeah, it's just seven quick videos right in Facebook. And I just make a heavily focused success club. That's kind of what my big focus is in the beginning. And after that, it kind of prompts them to move through. Um, after their new coach training into Emerald, into Diamond, and so on. Awesome. Thanks. Of course. Danny had a question. I'll mute you. Oh, we did at the same time. There you go, hon. Okay. Thank you, Jade. Everything was so amazing. Um, I love your idea of branding like your challenge group, and I've been playing around with the idea, but I was just curious, do you do like a new month or a new a fresh group every month, or do you do an ongoing group? Yeah, so mine's ongoing. Um, I've played around with both. But within this, I've kind of, rather than changing, so what I used to do is I would kind of talk to them about their goals and pick a program based on their goals. Almost everyone that I got started with was either 21 Day Fix or 21 Day Fix Extreme. So with like, and all my clients get this, I just made it in Pick Monkey. But I have like a little plan of action for them, and it's, and I can send you guys a screenshot of this or whatever. Um, but it's a 15 week plan of action. They start with 21 day fix extreme. 
and then move into 80 day obsession. And then after that, I tell them to kind of do whatever they want, but I do just have it one ongoing group. Um, I go live in there once a week and answer questions. And I just make sure that I have like a good connection with those people that are just starting. I always have people start on a Monday. So it'll be like next Monday. So there's never like a huge start date. And it's been working really well. And I, every Monday I just say like, hey, we have some new girls starting. Can all of the people that are veterans in here share something that you love about this group? And can the new girls share what you're excited about? And it kind of like bonds that connection between the two. Um, so follow up mm, question. Do you do that on Facebook then? Yes. Yeah, I do it on Facebook because I like to go live. And so then do you just keep everyone in there or do you like make sure they're on Shakeology every month? I kind of just let them stay in there. Um, most of the time when people fall off of the Shakeology track or the performance line, they'll start to see less results. And then they'll come back because they see these new girls crushing it because they're on Shakeology or because they're on the performance line. And so they tend to reorder, um, at least for the most part. And even if not, if it's gonna help them somewhat, I just let them stay in there. Okay, um, mm -hmm. and then my last question that like, booklet you keep showing us do you just send that to them digitally or do you yes send them? okay yep just a digital okay. copy I just have a hard copy so I can re reference it when I go live in there perfect thank you of course who else has a question for Miss Jade yes Taryn go ahead well I, <clears throat> I asked it in the chat but I figured I'd ask it live um do you use a like a third-party service to grow your Instagram, like a follow and follow service, or have you done it all yourself? I've tried them in the past and I find that it really messes with my demographics. Like it got to the point where it was like 50% women, 50% men. And my personal like target is not men. So I turned it all off and it also really stressed me out that it could totally shut down my Instagram and all that I had worked for would be lost. So I don't find that they help a ton. Um, I think that the biggest thing is obviously like using hashtags. I have run like promotions through Instagram and I think that those help a ton, but it's definitely been like a slow process to move forward. Um, and I, I mean, I feel like there's no secret sauce when it's about the growth of Instagram, but I honestly spend a lot of time on there reaching out to other pages, like other people, and just building friendships, liking their photos. I always do like the three, what is it called? It's like three, five, one method, I think is what it is, where you comment on three of their photos, like five of them, and it should return in a one follow, follow back. So I do that a lot. Um, and I just dive into hashtags that aren't fitness related. So like lately, because I'm newly engaged, I've been doing all of the sweating for the wedding, like bride to be like those ones and before that it was like fur mom um, retired teacher so I just make sure that it's not really fitness related and try to find people that are basically me before coaching cool mm -hmm. okay thank you Carly had a question I know she's driving and eating so I will ask this for you my dear do you let your new coaches add their clients into your ongoing boot camp yeah so in my new coach training I actually let them know like your first month if you have less than three people absolutely feel it feel like you're able to do that um all of my coaches get prompted to join my boot camp in lesson one of their new coach training because i want them to focus on their fitness so they're in there not very often do they add their own clients in because they kind of see how i run it i tell them you can take anything that i post in mine and you can do your own but i found that when i was telling everyone like yeah you can totally use it like that they just never took off and did their own thing. And I think that my girls tend to be like me. And in the beginning, I was like, no way. Like, I want them to come to me with questions. So most of them run their own, but I do allow it if they want to. You rock. Thanks for answering that one. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions. What questions do you have when it comes to Instagram? Yes, Shannon, go. Um, two quick questions. When do you think is the best time of day to post? And the second one is how did you get, or did you have someone design those little pictures on your highlights? I actually designed them. I love PicMonkey. So that's what I use for everything. Um, I went to school to be an art teacher. So I love like the creative backside behind a lot of things. And I like just playing around. So I did create those. Um, what was the other question? <laughs> oh, sorry. Time of day on when oh. you 
Yes. So I think it's really important to have our Instagram set to a business profile. When it's set to a business profile, you can actually see like what your best times are. And it's always shocking to me because mine are like Tuesdays right in the middle of the day. Um, but I always try to check those every couple of weeks because it changes based on who's following us. But I would do that to kind of make sure that you're posting when your following is actually on. And I've also heard that like if you're posting something really important, like a call to action or something like that, to be active on Facebook 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after you post it so that more people are being drawn to your page. So I always try to do that too, no matter when I'm posting. Cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Um, what are your favorite apps? Cause I was just looking at your Instagram page and like your pictures are really clear. Like what kind of apps do you use to like make your Yeah. Work? So let me pull that up so I can look. So I always use airbrush to whiten the backgrounds. I really like like crisp white photos. Um, and then I use Visco. Um, and the preset I use on there is like, I think it's seven a, and I just kind of adjust it a little bit until I find something I like. And then I just copy from that every single time so that it's constantly the same. Um, those are like my two go-tos. I don't really do anything else. Sometimes I'll play around with Snapseed, but n nothing too much. What I really encourage is like anytime coaches have an upgrade on their phone is to get the best iPhone. I'm an iPhone fan. So I do have the iPhone 10. Um, and that's basically what I take all my pictures on. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Christine, go ahead. I unmuted you. Oh, do it every time. Oh, <laughs> go, go. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so I just, I just wanted to clarify, I was looking at your page. I'd assume and you said something that you do promote posts on Instagram. I'm going to guess that you promoted this help wanted post, the one that's in your top row right now, just by the number of comments. So from those people that you had, you also said you just sent, you sent them a video, right? An email with a video. And I thought you said you like to keep your videos five minutes. Is that one that you send them related to that five minutes? And, and is it just one video or what's the next step? I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah, from absolutely. Yeah. So that one is a promoted post. Okay. It's going for seven days and it's just promoted straight through Instagram. Um, what I do after that is I grab all those emails and I send them an, I send them an email and in that email, it directs them to a landing page. Um, it, on that landing page, I have three videos that explain coaching. So it's kind of like my story so they can get to know me, um, what I do in a day. And then I kind of talk about like what they would be doing as a coach and what the cost is right below those three videos. It says claim my coaching spot. And it's just another quick form that's like, why is it on your heart to be a Tone Boss Tribe coach? Um, did you watch all three videos? And tell me a little bit more about yourself. And it emails me again. And from there, I can just ask them, I'm so excited. Like, I'm going to offer you one of these spots. And I kind of make it sound like super special. You know, like we have endless amounts of spots. But I say like, you were given one of these spots. What flavor of Shakeology would you like? What kind of performance line? Like, I ask them that. And then I put their enrollment through after that. So again, it is a pretty simple three-step process. So you said it's your story is one of the videos, what you do and then what they would be doing. Yeah. And I kind of just share like, so in that third video, it's kind of a bigger video. Um, I kind of go over like some of the objections, like time, not being good on social media. I go over kind of my income growth as a coach. And then I share their options for getting started. And I kind of word it as, a mentorship fee rather than like a new coach starter kit or whatever, because a lot of MLMs have like packages that they have to get and then sell. So I just tell them like, this is what is required to become a part of our team because I want you to have firsthand experience using our programs and our supplements before you get started. And it, it's been working really well. I, I, I refer it to, or I guess I compare it to a yoga certification or an NASM certification. And I let them know, like, that's near $1,000. This is 160 Great comparison. I flippin' love that. Okay, what else? Yes, Jazz, go. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. You just hold tight. There you go. Okay, go. Um, what part, I guess, as soon as you onboard 
a new coach? How quickly do you teach them um, all your tricks and tips for Instagram? Like, do you have them, as soon as they do your new coach training, do you have like a whole Instagram academy for them so that they can rebrand and, you know, change everything? So in my seven days, I do have one video focused on like social media, but I don't dive too in depth with that. Um, it's just kind of the basics, like post every single day, um, make sure that you're in good lighting. Yeah. And I kind of just want them to treat it like a business and not do like, ne like terrible sweaty selfies because no one wants to, if we look like we're dying, no one else wants to join us. Right. <laughs> like treat it like you would a business, but I have my new coach training and at the end of it, it prompts them to join an Emerald group. At the end of their Emerald group, it prompts them to join a social media group. And from there, okay. that group just has like a ton of social media trainings, things that's worked for me in the past. They're not all videos that I've created. Some of them are videos I've found on YouTube that worked for me as a newer coach. And so it's, it's, it's later down the road because that first couple months, they really do have that warm market that they can reach yeah. into. So Normally I find that it's month four or five that people are trying to break through that into the cold market. And that's when they really need to start focusing on that in like Instagram or Facebook growth. And they're all in different groups, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We have time for one more question before I ask her three last questions. Anybody else have a question as far as the converting? Jade, amazing content. Can I say that? Like, Thank way you. to be so, you can tell you're the teacher's yeah. coming out, the very, <laughs> like this, and I love this. So that was so good. Is there any last questions? Yes, Christine. Oh, oh my gosh, here, I'll unmute you. Stay tight. Go. Okay. I didn't see anyone else's hands go, so I thought I'd take advantage of another question. Um, You've, you've shared a lot of great stuff. It's been awesome. Thank you. If there, um, if there was like just one thing you said of all of everything that you've shared, um, one thing that you'd say of all the things I shared, this is the one thing that I think you guys all should implement. What would that be? I think the biggest switch for me was doing one thing every single day that scared me. And for the most part that was getting on video. I, the reason I didn't like teaching is because I didn't like talking in front of people. Like that terrified me. And so I forced myself every single day for a really long time, like most of last year to either go live or to create a video for my team or to create a video that I could send to my clients or my coaches. And so I think that the biggest thing is video is everything. People can get to know you so well through video. So I would say creating those videos that you can either send to potential clients or coaches has been the biggest game changer for me. Awesome question. Awesome answer. And that actually goes to my number three question. So I just want to ask this to kind of reiterate that. What is one thing that they, that you would suggest? I mean, all of these coaches are listening to you about Instagram. What is one thing on top of video that you would tell them go do today? With Instagram, be very, very present on Instagram stories and utilize the DM or swipe up feature. So many people are on there all the time, but people don't know that we have things that they can go to. So just creating all those little, like, I don't know, like call to actions throughout the day that don't seem in your face. And a lot of times mine are very small, but if people are watching you for a while, they'll see it and they'll want to be a part of it. So just creating all those little funnels to bring people into your DM. Awesome. Thank you so much. So I, now my, my last two questions for you. So we, both, we all know that you're a three-star diamond. You're also, one thing I didn't mention is she's a one-star diamond in her second CBC. She has been a coach three years now, almost exactly, a little past three years now. But my question for you is, on average, what is your, and I know this answer, but I want you to tell them, on average, what is your typical SC per month? So last year, I never dropped below 20 a month. Um, and this year so far, I don't think I've dropped below 30 last month. I was at 50. So I'd say like anywhere from 20 to 50 is average for me, um, a month. And it's pretty split down the middle as of right now, clients and coaches. And yeah, I missed success club one month. <laughs> you know what? And coaches always speak about that one month and it will never happen again. So I guess yes, exactly when it comes to recruiting. How many on average are you recruiting per month to the business? Like working coaches, everyone that I bring in is a working coach or they come in with the intention to be a working coach. So 
Um, last month, for example, I brought in, well, last month it was 11 working coaches. Obviously there are people that don't work the business after they like go through the training and stuff or they just fall off. But it's always with the intent that they're going to work the business. I don't do the discount coach thing very often unless it's a previous client. Awesome. And then, and I'm just seeing it cause I, um, see this on here, you know, in, um, February, she had seven coaches that counted towards elite that hit success club. And in March she had five. So let me just ask you, what do you do to really make that a precedence and a standard that your coaches are hitting success club and helping people? Well, I always lead by example. So I'm always making sure that I'm hitting success club before the 15th. Um, that's something I encourage my coaches to do. I do a success club gift for my coaches and that's totally by choice, whether it be like a little headband or a tank top, um, any coaches that, and it, it kind of depends on the month. Like in January, I think I did success club 10 because I knew it would be, it would be a lot easier for coaches to hit success club. Now that it might be getting a little harder or whatever, sometimes I'll drop it down to if you hit success club five, you get the prize. So I always do some sort of a prize, even if it's a training with me and my fiance where we're teaching them about Instagram or something like that. Um, some sort of an incentive for them to push for. I always do leaderboards. I do them weekly. Um, I was very competitive growing up and I know that when I started coaching, I hated when I wasn't at the top of the leaderboard. So I do that for my coaches as well. But that's, I mean, we talk about it in the team page all the time. I go live on the 15th of the month and I tell them like, you guys should be at success club right now. If you're not, what are you going to do? And we talk about it in the comments below. It's something that we talk about all the time. I think because it is talked about so often, it becomes less scary to them. Mm -hmm. I know as a new coach, they're like, how many people do I have to get to be in success club? And so just breaking it down constantly every single week has been very helpful. Awesome. One last question. And it's just coming from the comments here from Danny. What percentage of your SC points stem from Instagram? Would you say? I would say probably like 90% of them. Not very many come from Facebook for me. Awesome. Okay. Yay. That was so good, Jade. Really okay. appreciate you. I, um, jumping over, I know she's my Wednesday gal, you know, um, on my Wednesday three and fours. And so it's so cool to have you on our Tuesday. So thank you so much. Your content cool. was amazing. And like I said, the, the process of just being very clear, black and white, this is how I do it. Um, was so great. So thank you for your time. Thank you ladies for jumping on. I appreciate your questions. And now I would say run with what she's saying. Do that one thing that ultimately scares you and really, you know, utilize Instagram stories to really benefit fit your business. So that was awesome. Thank you so much. And yes, I will thank see you for having me. You're welcome, Jade. K ladies go out and rock it out. You have all the, all the content and all the tools make it happen now. Thank you. See ya.